Hello everybody, Kane here and welcome to another video of Art of Conquest. In this one, we're going to talk about Reliquary. So I have covered this particular video multiple times, but stuff changed. I think I changed my daily a, a bit, as well as I might have some different opinions in this video and we're doing full guides anyway. So we're just going to cover majority of the features one by one and... In the end, probably a week or two from now, we're just gonna start building formations to help people out and etc. So, Reliquary. When this feature came out, it was pretty beneficial for us to raise uh, the hero bonuses first, as it gave a ton of HP percent, it gave a ton of attack percent, and pretty much mages and necromancers, like getting that high value, pretty much decimated both the PvE contents and PvP as well. Meta kind of changed and Armory kind of low-key countered the Reliquary bonuses and, and like going hero attack stuff because the resistances like became pretty friggin' huge as well with the Covenant. So I kind of would not really suggest to incredibly or very quickly rush this feature i think people should slowly upgrade this with what they get from events and stuff like that unless every single or most of your other features are pretty high upgraded then you can probably invest a little bit into this one but i kind of would not really suggest to throw like hundreds and thousands of custom utility boxes the reason i bring this up is i know some people have done that and it's a huge, huge waste of your in-game time to just spend that on relic boxes to try and actually get the six stars. It's really, really not that efficient. I mean, sure, you're gonna get a particular buff in here. Uh, sure, you're gonna break through and get like this thing. But in terms of the value uh, that you could get from other features, like even say armory, uh, perhaps prisms, perhaps any other feature that you haven't upgraded. It's it's huge. So I really uh, would not suggest rushing this particular feature if you have it somewhat decently upgraded or above average and just do it as you go on. So that is pretty much it for this one. Me personally, I'm just going it a little by little. Uh, as you can see, five of them are pretty much at the half mark. And that's pretty goddamn decent because I would not really want one piece to be very, very high. Because that would mean if I am unlucky and I do get that particular piece, pretty much majority or a lot of the boxes or RNG could be wasted. So I would kind of like to go at this particular pace or so. And then I'm just going to save these particular boxes until I would require maybe one last one or, or so. It really depends and just finish it entirely or so. But yeah, that is uh, pretty much my idea and how I might, you know, just finish this one particular set. Probably will take half a year, probably will take a year, but we're gonna see. There is really no big rush in terms of this. So aside from that and my opinion in terms of that, we have to talk about the relics daily. So quite a lot of people, as I said, rushed custom utility boxes for relic boxes and then wanted to get this for events. Now, I'm not entirely sure how this particular one performs for the events. I think this one does not spawn at the beginning of the battle, but I could, you know, be wrong. And if it does spawn after 15 seconds, majority of the events are not going to benefit from it. So the only events that are going to benefit from it is Rhino Rampage, which you probably will proc two or three of these drums, and Nightfire, in which you will likely proc a couple, and then the boss will have some huge, huge reductions and stuff like that. So th th there's not really that much place where you could actually use it. Now, do keep in mind, I don't think that this starts at, at the beginning. If it does, then like the information I'm saying might be kind of useless just uh, for you to be aware. 
because I don't have it, I really don't know how this works in PvE. But even then, it's only 30% attack speed and some damage. Now, I fought plenty of people who had this, and, and honestly, just rushing so many custom utility boxes for this, completely not worth it. Like, you're losing a ton of stuff or potential stats or potential bonuses just to get something that might not really be that beneficial for you. Now, I'm not saying this is bad or anything. I'm, I'm just, you know, putting it out there that wasting a ton of materials to get this is not worth it. Just go at it at your own pace and eventually you're gonna get it. Uh, and I didn't mean that you should not get any of these other ones. That is a whole other story. So, we're gonna start from the beginning and we're gonna cover majority of these circles and what benefits you could be getting with them. So, starting from the first page, as you can see, I have selected for troop magic damage resistance. Quite a lot of people will tell you that mm, Era of Mages has finished. Most of those people um, are pretty much just trying to lie to you and say, a lot of other BS, you know, to have you swap to probably other stats. I've even seen that in Moon Tree chat saying that the era of the mages has finished and pretty much a mage is still the top DPS or um, in say, uh, how can I put it, um, shares that rank with a necromancer and both of them are pretty much, you know, magic damage dealers. So, um, the mage meta or mage era ending is actually completely false. So you would kind of want troop magic damage resistance for your army. Now there is a catch as well, because of course you do want the heroes to kind of be on magic damage resistance as well. But that is kind of a choice uh, in terms of which one of your bursts, or, or rather, what kind of PvP side you prefer to play off of. For example, if your stall side is tankier, uh, you could go for this, so your stall side will be even tankier. If you play mainly through your burst and you win through your burst, you would kind of want heroes to be on magic resistance instead and perhaps the army on physical. That solely depends on your type of uh, playstyle or build. In terms of dragon, dragon, I don't really focus too much on that. I kind of want to get this uh, giant's bane. So this is just a placeholder for me. And of course, crit rate or attack speed. Attack speed does not have a cap uh, or soft cap or hard cap, while the critical rate does. So this 5% can mean completely zero, while this attack speed can actually mean uh, 6.25. So this says all units. That means uh, heroes as well, as well as dragon, I do believe. So be aware that dragon sometimes might be suicidal depending how much attack speed you give him but of course heroes would also do um, a little bit of like the faster basic attacks and of course since my account is um, mages or necromancers doing top dps you want to go for magic it kind of helps them out do more damage how much i have no friggin idea but more magic doesn't hurt and now the selection between uh, this, uh, the Battlefield Hunter or Giant's Bane. So this works against Rakan, works against Sylvani Watchers, that's their archers, works against the Dwarf Deadeyes, which is their archers, works against Rakan, um, both frontline and uh, archers, humans, both frontline and archers. However, this one in particular works against uh, Dwarf Mechs, and, of course, heroes. Uh, there are, I think, a couple of other um, units. I think frontline or backline, like scorpions. I think spiders are also large. I'm not entirely sure. Um, might need to recheck on that. Should work on them and you increase damage to them. In PvP, usually heroes mean most of it. So for PvP, you might want to have this. So you kill heroes quicker, faster, better. For PvE content, sometimes you want to have this, so you have sets, you can actually build different stuff. So, up to you. Now, the second window. 
pretty generic you have crit rate crit rate for army heroes instead of these cap stuff you just go straight for attack speed which is not a cap and all of your heroes will perform better for dragon though you want crit rate solely because if you put attack speed on dragon your dragon is gonna suicide more often you don't want the dragon to run into the enemy backline you want the dragon to be on your side of the field where your frontline and heroes can actually somewhat defend it so keep in mind this has to be on crit rate for the next selection i just go for evade chance i mean skeletons have too much evade they, they might ev evade like a couple of uh, hero attacks maybe archers they're not going to evade because they have like 500 accuracy but some heroes maybe they're gonna evade question mark i have no idea and then i just go for stamina i, I think i just dropped majority of my chances to win for stats because i'm facing like 25 million cores or 23 or whatever they win in stats regardless so i just go for stats which benefits my tanks benefits my uh, paladins so they don't die as easy just by a little bit or so and you know for me that's fine if anything you can just go for a command and try to win in command if you want to win on stats personally i just drop that and i just pvp as is and in terms of this special ability i believe the earthen shield is top tier or top class buff in this one if the unit is above 70 percent damage is reduced by 25 that can reduce a ton of dps like it can nullify huge procs of damage to have um, a very very small tick or so and it depends like if you have high resistances and even more resistances it can just completely reduce that particular huge proc so if you see resistances you pick resistances then the third window uh we have crit resistance or healing received i mean uh crit resistance hugely capped values healing received are not capped values and a lot of heroes heal a lot of army well not army but a lot of heroes heal they have passive regeneration uh, i think this should work on them as well so i just choose this for dragon uh, i don't think the dragon has a ton of heals unless you put stuff on it uh, or a, a prism set or whatever so i just go for the dragon to reduce some of the damage um, uh, that he could take right so i reduce some crit resistance uh, so he's taking less crit damage or whatever i'm not sure how much hard to say by percentages but that's what i go for and then we have choice by crit rate or attack speed pretty much again you pick attack speed it's non capped and the crit rate will be capped so always attack speed in reliquary and then of course you pick stamina and command Honestly, I don't think that this choice would be good uh, unless you have like rogues and mages top tier DPS then perhaps, but I'm, I don't know. I prefer to just go for a little bit of more tanky stats for uh, like the glads and paladins. It's really hard to say how much this benefits them, but then again, command also buffs like Elana's magic resistance, buffs the auras um, of uh, specific races, like let's say ardent aura or archer mastery or a storm and mastery all of those things are gonna be buffed by this as well by a percent maybe maybe a bit less than percent i mean it does help out or so so i just go for this and then i go for initiative now th that is pretty hard to say whether now this or this is better because sometimes the battle should be won or is like not should be one but you could break through in the first like 15 20 seconds sometimes 30 sometimes one minute so it's hard to say whether or not this is useful but then again damage taken reduced by 15 percent in the first 30 could actually make your frontline a lot more tankier and unbreakable while the enemy might just be throwing abilities to beat you 
well this mm, you know it's it's better but it's after 40 seconds and after 40 seconds your you know front line might actually be gone by then so personally i would just go for in initiative it never kind of failed me for majority of my gameplay so i'm just gonna stick with it but uh, there are some fights where I would think Prudence would actually have won the battle as well. But it's very, very situational. Like, really very, very situational. Aside from that, since I am playing Lich, uh, I don't really require the crit damage. So, for me, it's a lot easier to select this particular one. So, uh, I go for a Accuracy on my frontline uh, or uh, troops again because i only use frontline so for me i don't need crit damage on stalkers i need accuracy for them to stack uh, their stuff better for them to um you, you know just hit stuff perhaps if they invade backline perhaps they can kill a hero or whatever Heroes, a no-brainer, you increase crit damage over accuracy. Accuracy, they have like 150-200%. For dragon, um, you select one which skill you want to go for. So this is pretty much uh, the decision whether or not you want the repose, which would slightly increase the damage taken reduction, or the healing. Uh, these two in particular are pretty specific and you want to have them both on these. This one is resistances, uh, both magic and physical, and this one is healing received. So honestly, I would not really go for evade chance since this also affects heroes, I believe. So I would just go for healing received as it's just more beneficial for entire field. And then again, this middle one for dragon whichever ability you think you would want to for majority of the time i had reign of mercy and it i think it benefited my stall for quite a bit but now since everything is resistance repose might actually be the main one i'm still testing this i really in terms of this one in particular i cannot really provide the best advice or which one to pick for like the uh, previous ones which I have selected, pretty much for me, like those ones are top tier selections. This one, I, I really have no clue. Like, I use this one, it kind of been okay. I use this one, it, it's, it's like, um, I don't know. I really don't know, honestly. Uh, probably I might provide better information maybe a week or so after testing um i might just pin a comment with my opinion on this one in a week or so but aside from that now this is the last page and as you can see i am playing lich and because i'm playing lich the entire top bar is literally just you know magic stuff magic for army because the uh, stalker poison damage is the highest damage that they have meaning if you upgrade magic damage their poison is gonna do more damage and potentially kill stuff like they did during the bug thing so still would kind of benefit them i mean both of these can work this is their basic attack this is their poison attack would help out uh, other than that it really depends what race you're playing so sylvani i think think should benefit from physical because i think their basic attack is physical as a lot of people said their percentage damage is uh, magical then rakan you would want physical humans you would want physical and then the heroes you select which heroes do the most dps currently in the mid-tier meta where i am um, those mages those necromancers do the most damage so for me personally, this is a no-brainer. You go for magic. Some people are saying mage meta is over. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. I mean, unless they're like high-end meta where physical is, is like the uh, top-tier stuff, I think. I still think. Because at some point, um, like gladiators, rogues, and paladins like did a ton of damage. Even like... Um, like mechanists also did damage so high-end meta i would agree physical has potential to be better 
um, anything below high end or high tier meta, pretty much mages take over by a huge amount. So if anything says otherwise, for mid tier meta, pretty much they're trying to bullshit you so you screw yourself over. So keep that in mind. Aside from that, Dragon, Dragon only does magic damage majority of the time. It's, it's a no-brainer. You pick the magic damage. And then, of course, you have a choice between Evade or Crit Hit Damage. Uh, increases critical hit damage resistance. I pick Evade because I'm, I'm playing Stalkers. I mean, this one might not benefit as much as potentially dodging hero damage for uh, heroes, for army, or, or whatever. So I kind of pick Evade. I mean, people might pick another one. I don't know, I just go for some evade for heroes to potentially dodge some, again, hero damage. Archers you're not gonna dodge, heroes you still have some potential to actually dodge. And then uh, the last one really depends on who you're facing more and who you're struggling against. So this one, we have a ton of humans in dual tower, a ton, I think 50% plus of the fights are human. But as you can see, I have selected the Lich and Sylvani. The reason for that is humans, I can actually still win. These frigging goddamn trees, bro. They, they take sometimes so frigging much to kill. So I, I just, you know, have this. Frig those trees, burn them to the ground. I don't know, burn the entire race. I don't give a damn these trees. Even after the nerf, they are friggin' annoying. So I just have this to try and bypass those trees quicker. I mean, man, they're still goddamn tanky. They take sometimes no friggin' damage, or they take like friggin' 30 seconds to kill one single tree. It's, it's crazy. So that are my kind of choices for the Reliquary Staley. Probably this video is like 20 minutes long, but hey, this is a guide. Uh, I mean, what else can you expect? In terms of these ones, I cannot really say. None of us can actually reach the high tier stuff anyway. So people around my core probably don't even have this one as well. Like most people. So don't really need to go into the last window anyway but yeah that's pretty much it do let me know in the comments down below if this helped you out this is what i currently use for pvp um as well as uh, events or uh, depending which event because i have different sets for different races and stuff like that but yeah it's pretty much it do let me know in the comments down below if this helped you out if it did, do hit that subscribe button. It would help me out a lot. Plus, if you would wish to support me more than just watching my videos, I have made a Patreon page where you would be able to do just that. And in return, I would be able to help you out more individually in terms of events, PvP, formations, and stuff like that. As well as I would like to thank all of my patrons for the support. I really, really appreciate it for your subscriptions. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe out there.